You post-war old Dutch cleanser, famous for chasing dirt, presents... Nick Carter, famous for chasing crime. Every week at this time, two great names are joined as new post-war old Dutch cleanser brings you one of the most resourceful and daring characters in all detective fiction, Nick Carter, Master Detective. Nick, you say it couldn't have been either an accident or suicide? No, Patsy, it couldn't. But Kirby says Mr. Briggs was alone in his study at the time. I know it sounds impossible, Patsy, but somehow I believe he's telling the truth. But who fired the gun that killed Briggs? Oh, that's really the $64 question. No, Patsy. The newspapers are right about Briggs' estate. That's the $4 million question. Today, the exciting news in household cleansers is new post-war old Dutch cleanser made with activated seismatite. Try it yourself. See if it doesn't clean in less time with less rubbing than any other cleanser you've ever used. For here's the first real cleanser improvement since the introduction of seismatite. It's activated seismatite. And it gives new post-war old Dutch cleanser a new fast action, new almost effortless ease, a new snow-white appearance. So why put up with ordinary out-of-date cleansers? Instead, switch to new post-war old Dutch cleanser made with activated seismatite. See for yourself how it gives you new speed, new ease in all your cleaning. Get new post-war Old Dutch Cleanser tomorrow in the same familiar package. Now for the case of the devil's left eye. Today's adventure starring Lon Clark as Nick Carter, brought to you by new post-war Old Dutch Cleanser. Lucky Bristol is a very polite individual. In fact, his first rule for success in running a gambling house is... Always be polite to the suckers, uh, uh, the customers. As for his second rule, well, Lucky is in his private office now, politely explaining it to one of the said uh, customers. The way I figure it, Mr. Willard, what's the use of winning if you can't collect? And so I make it a rule to always collect. Oh, well, how much do I owe you, Lucky? Better than 50 grand. More than I ever let anybody jip me out of. Well, you know, Lucky, those are gambling debts. Legally, you can't collect a cent on them. 100% correct, Mr. Willard. So when I run into a welcher, I have to use methods that aren't so legal. If you're threatening me... Why, I... I wouldn't harm a hair of your head, Mr. Willard. But you could meet up with an accident, couldn't you? What do you mean? Oh, a couple of broken legs, maybe. It could even be a fatal accident. In fact, I'm willing to bet that's what it would be. Lucky. Lucky, you've got to give me time. I'll be able to pay you every cent if you'll only wait. Wait? How long? Well, my Uncle Jonathan has millions. I'm his only heir. If you'll just be patient... You I mean think... wait till the old man kicks off? <laughs> he might outlive the two of us. But if anything happens to me, you'll never get your money. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Maybe it'd be better if your uncle met up with an accident, huh? You... You, you don't mean that... I, I don't mean anything. Why don't you ask the old boy to loan you the money? Well, I'll try, but... That's right. You try. Try hard enough, and maybe there won't have to be any accidents. Well, Mr. Willard, it was over a week ago you said you were going to ask your uncle to loan you the money. How about it? I've begged him a dozen times to let me have the money, but he won't. That's too bad, isn't it? Look, Lucky, I'm going to Lake Placid for the weekend, but I'll ask him again on Monday. So if you'll only wait until I've then... waited a long time now, Mr. Willard. From now on, I'm making no promises. Jonathan Briggs residence. Hello, Kirby. I'd like to speak to my uncle. Oh, yes, Mr. Harry. Just a moment, sir. He's in the study. I'll put your call through to him there. Hello? Hello, Uncle Jonathan. This is Harry. Oh, I thought you were up at Lake Placid. That's where I'm calling from. I was worried about your cold. I don't believe it. You knew very well that I'm so much better. 
The doctor said I could get up today. But, Uncle, you've been in bed for the past week, and I naturally... Yes, yes. What you really called about was that money, wasn't it? Well, um, Kirby can't hear you, can he? What's the matter with you? You know I'm always alone in my study at this time of day. Well, yes, Uncle Jonathan, I did want to talk to you about the money. Ah, well, you can save your breath. I won't give you one single solitary red cent. But, Uncle Jonathan, I... a penny, and that's final. If you... Uh... Uncle Jonathan. Uncle Jonathan. Yes, sir. I'm Nick Carter. This is my secretary, Miss Bowen. How do you do? How do you do? Sergeant Matheson of the Homicide Squad asked me to come up here and take a look around. Oh, yes, sir. Won't you come in? Thank you. The study is this way, sir. You're Kirby, Mr. Briggs' houseman, aren't you? Yes, sir. It was I who found the body after the, uh, the accident. This is Mr. Briggs' study. Why, why, it's like a room in a medieval castle. That's what it is, miss. Mr. Briggs bought the entire room from the owners of McLennan Castle in Scotland and brought it over to America piece by piece. Even the wall paneling? And that huge stained glass window across the room there? Everything, sir. Hmm. Huh. How unusual to find a room like this in a big city apartment. <laughs> yes, miss. The city and town photographed it last year for their October issue. Oh, Nick. Look at this magnificent antique cabinet here by the door. Yes, that's a high boy, miss. And look at those old guns on the wall beside the high boy. Mr. Briggs collected antique firearms, miss. God. Uh, here is the one that, uh, that caused the accident. Hmm. An old flintlock musket. Yes, sir. Well, it certainly is a clumsy-looking thing. Well, just about as deadly at close range as a sawed-off shotgun. Well, why do they call it a flintlock? Well, you see, Patsy, the hammer holds this bit of flint. Yes, I can see it. First you have to cock it, and then when the trigger is pulled, a hammer falls, and the flint strikes against this piece of steel here and causes a spark. Then what? See this little hollow here? Uh-huh. That's called a firing pan. Holds a small amount of powder. That powder was ignited by the spark, and that sets off the real charge inside the gun barrel, causing the gun to be fired. Well, if you have to go through all that preparation to make the gun shoot, how could it go off by accident? That's what Matty was wondering, and that's why he asked me to take a look. Suppose you tell me just what happened, Kirby. Well, sir, Mr. Briggs was in his study, as he always was at that time of day. Early this afternoon, wasn't it? Uh, yes, sir. The clock had just struck 2.30 when Mr. Harry called from Lake Placid. He wanted to talk to his uncle, so I pushed the button for the buzzer in the study. And when I heard Mr. Briggs pick up the phone, I hung up. How long after that did you hear the shot? Not more than a minute or two, sir. I rushed in here and found Mr. Briggs in that chair behind the desk, dead. The gun was lying on the floor over there. On the floor, huh? Yes, sir. Kirby, are you sure there wasn't anyone else in the room with Mr. Briggs? Well, they couldn't possibly have been, sir. You can see there's no place to hide in here, and there's only one door... I was right outside, and no one could have got past me. Well, how about that stained glass window? Does it open onto a terrace? Uh, no, miss. Outside, there's a sheer drop of 23 stories. Oh. And it's the only window in the room, too. Yes, sir. Well, I guess the next thing is to talk with Mr. Briggs' nephew. Oh, Mr. Harry hasn't arrived home from Lake Placid yet, sir. I expect him at 10 tomorrow morning. I see. All right, then, you can expect me at 11. Lucky, what's the idea of phoning me here at the apartment? That was a nice, convenient little accident your uncle had, wasn't it, Willard? Convenient for both of us. Look, Lucky, I can't talk to you now. I just got in from Lake Placid an hour ago, and there's some people waiting for me in the study. You call me back? Yeah, yeah, yes, of course. Goodbye. I'm sorry to keep you waiting, Mr. Carter. I, uh, I was in my workroom. Workroom? In an apartment like this? Well, I uh, I make a hobby of astronomy, and I have a little place fixed up where I can build my own telescope. Sounds very technical. Well, it is, rather. Of course, I can't grind my own lenses, but I have them made to my specifications and then do the rest of the work myself. Well, I, I suppose you want to know about Uncle Jonathan. Uh, shall I leave, sir? No, no, that's all right, Kirby. Keep on with your work. Need any help with that ladder? Oh, no, thank you, sir. I can manage... I'm all through except cleaning the stained glass window. I'll do the outside first. The outside? 
My goodness, how do you get at it? Oh, it's very simple, miss. Mr. Briggs had the window mounted on a special frame so that it swings into the room. You see? Oh. Very neat arrangement. <sighs> it's a beautiful window, Mr. Willard. I've always thought so. As you can see, it represents Satan being cast out of heaven. Uh, well, Mr. Willard, about your uncle's accident. I'm afraid there isn't much I can tell you. I was talking to him by a long distance when I heard the shot. And then a moment later, Kirby picked up the phone and told me what happened. How do you think it happened? Well, it seems pretty obvious to me. The gun fell off the wall and was discharged by the jar when it hit the floor. You mean to say that a gun like that hung on the wall loaded? It never was loaded, as far as I know. That's the part I don't understand. Oh, Nick, did you call Scubby before you left the office? Oh, darn it. I forgot all about oh. it. I better call him right now. There's a phone in the living room if you want to use it. Well, thanks. You better come along, Patsy, in case he wants any of those figures you have for him. Right, Nick. Good gracious. Well, what's the matter, Kirby? Something wrong with the window? Uh, yes, Mr. Harry. Something very odd. What is it, Kirby? Satan's left eye. It's... Kirby, look out! Ah! Hey, what happened? It's Kirby. Oh, he... Nick, Nick, look at the ladder. It's half out the window. He lost his balance. I tried to grab him, but it was too late. He fell 23 stories down to the street. <laughs> From the antique stained glass window, the evil face of Satan seems to leer triumphantly down into the room where violent death has struck twice within 24 hours. We'll see what happens in just a moment. Here's what is new about new post-war Old Dutch cleanser. It's made with activated seismatite. New post-war Old Dutch cleanser cuts grease on contact. Your eyes will open wide at the rubbing you save as activated seismatite found only in new post-war Old Dutch cleans away dirt and stains with new miracle-like speed. Yes, and there's new, almost effortless ease to cleaning with new post-war Old Dutch for it cleans, polishes with a new gliding action that's utterly different, amazingly smooth. Snowy white, it rinses away quickly, leaves no sediment. So try it, compare it. See if new post-war Old Dutch cleanser made with activated seismatite doesn't clean in less time with less rubbing than any other cleanser you've ever used. Now back to the case of the devil's left eye. Today's adventure with Nick Carter brought to you by new post-war Old Dutch cleanser. A room transplanted from a medieval Scottish castle to the tower apartment of a Manhattan skyscraper has been the scene of two apparently accidental deaths. Two hours have passed since the second tragedy, and Nick and Patsy, on their way back to Nick's office, have stopped in front of a small shop. Hmm. I never saw this place before. Giuseppe Serino, second-hand books and magazines. <laughs> Giuseppe's quite a character. You like it. Oh? Ah, Nick, Come down, my friend. Hello. Long time I no see, eh? How are you, Giuseppe? It's the Ben, grazie. Good. This is Giuseppe Sorino, Patsy. Giuseppe, Miss Bowen. I am very happy to meet you, Signorina. Hello, Giuseppe. Giuseppe used to be in Vaudeville. Oh. See, si, see. Si. <laughs> when I am not so fat like this, <laughs> we play all the big time. Mm. Four flying Sorinos. Tumblers extraordinaire. Oh. Uh, Giuseppe, I wonder if you have a copy of City and Town for October of last year. Uh, sure, sure, sure. Back this way. We, we got them all. All right. Sure. Nick, is that the issue of City and Town that Kirby said can paint a picture of the Briggs study? Mm-hmm. How's business, Giuseppe? Ah, uh, she's no good. Everybody, she's got too much money. Can afford the new magazine. No one's old magazine. <laughs> well, if you'd like to pick up some extra cash, I've got a job for you. Oh, no, I take. Fine. October 1946, you are, huh? Eh? Yes, that's ah, right. Here. here she is. Almost like a new. Ah, that's it, Giuseppe. Thanks. Is the picture there, Nick? Yeah, just a minute, sir. Just a minute. Oh, yes. Here it is. In color, too. Oh, the stained glass window certainly shows up well. Yes, and here's what I was looking for. What? The gun. That 17th century flintlock. I knew it couldn't have fallen from the wall beside the high boy and landed where it did. Why, it's on the high boy in the picture. And I'll bet that's where it was when it killed Jonathan Briggs. Yeah, but even if it was there, Nick, that doesn't explain how it could go off by itself. No, you're right there. But it may prove that Willard was lying about where the gun was. And with Giuseppe's help, I may be able to learn how the second so-called accident 
Happen. Uh, what's the kind of job do you like for me to do, Nick? Something that's right in your line, Giuseppe. A little tumbling. Oh, I'm not so sure. <laughs> it's a long time now since I do very hard stunts. Now, this one won't be hard, Giuseppe. We can do it right in my office. And it's easy. As easy as... as falling off a ladder. <laughs> It's a hard work for fat men like me. Oh, Nick, <laughs> you've made him fall off that ladder a dozen times. First you have him lean to the left until he gets off his balance. Then you have him lean to the right. Yes, and every time he and the ladder fall in opposite directions. Huh? What do you mean? Well, Patsy, if Kirby had been leaning away from the window opening, he'd have fallen inside the room. And the ladder would have fallen across the sill the way we found it. But Kirby didn't fall inside. He fell outside. Then he wasn't leaning away from the opening. If he'd been leaning toward the opening, he would have fallen outside, and the ladder would have fallen inside the room. But why? That's what Giuseppe's been proving for me. When you fall off a ladder, your feet instinctively push it away from you in the opposite direction. But suppose it happened this way. Uh, oh. Not hurt, are you, Giuseppe? Uh, no, 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 but... Uh... Uh, what's a big idea? Push the ladder when I'm a no look. I'm sorry, Giuseppe. I had to prove my point. You see, Patsy? When I pushed, Giuseppe and the ladder both fell in the same direction, just as Kirby and the ladder did this morning. What? Oh. You mean you think Willard pushed Kirby out the window? From what we've seen here, I think he did. But... This test of yours isn't proof that he killed Kirby. No, but when you add this to the fact that he was probably lying about the gun hanging on the wall, Mr. Willard appears to be a very suspicious character as far as I'm concerned. But Nick Willard was in Lake Placid. He couldn't pull the trigger of the gun by remote control. No, he couldn't. But he could have, shall we say, made arrangements. What kind of arrangements? Come on, Betsy. We're going to take another look at Jonathan Briggs' study. Maybe that will answer your question. <laughs> Police sealed this room up right after Kirby was killed. If there's any evidence here, nobody's had a chance to destroy it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Even the stepladder's still here. Fortunately for us, I need that to get where I'm going. To get where you're going? Yep. Where's that? I want to take a look at the top of the high boy. Ah, there. Be careful that you don't fall, Nick. I won't. Now, let's see. What are you looking for, Nick? Uh-huh. Just as I thought. Climb up here beside me and I'll show you. Oh, it better be good, Nick. I don't like ladders. It is good. See here? Oh, what a shame. That beautiful finish is all scratched up. Yes. That must be where the gun rested. And here's a dent in the wood paneling near where the butt of the gun must have been. Meaning what? When the gun went off, the recoil threw it back against the wall where the dent is. Uh-huh. And it bounced off the high boy onto the floor. Hmm. Gun like this would have to have quite a kick. Well, what do you suppose those books are doing up here? The butt of the gun were propped up on those books. And the muzzle were resting on the edge where these scratches are. Where would the gun be pointing? What? Right at that chair where Mr. Briggs was sitting when he was shot. Mm-hmm. You begin to see how he was killed? Oh, yes. And at such a short distance, it couldn't have missed. Right. But... Oh, how was the gun set off? You still don't know that. I think I do. See these burn places here? Uh, yes, they look like cigarette burns. But nobody could lay a cigarette down up here. It's too high. Patsy, take a look at the face of Satan in the stained glass window there across the room. See anything strange about it? No. No, it's pretty badly warped, but that's just age, isn't it? Look at his eyes. Why, well, they don't match. Exactly. Oh. The right one is yellow, and the left one is white. Now, do you remember what time Mr. Briggs was killed? About 2.30, Kirby said. Right. And about 2.30 tomorrow, I think we can put this case in the file, marked, case, closed. <laughs> Why did you insist on my meeting you here in the study at this time, Mr. Carter? 
I had an appointment for 2 o'clock with a friend. This is more important, Willard. Sit there behind the desk, please. All right, but what is this all about? Now, everything is just the way it was two days ago. You're sitting where your uncle was when he was shot. And the gun is back on the high boy, loaded and primed. What? On the high boy, Willard. Not on the wall where you said it was. And it's pointed directly at the chair where you sit. Well, I'm getting out of here. Sit back in that chair. But the gun, if it should go off. It would kill you just as it did your uncle. But there's no flint in the hammer this time. So it can't possibly go off. Can it, Willard? I won't stay here. You'll stay in that chair if I have to hold you there. What time is it, Patsy? 2.29. Carter, God, let me out of here. In a minute or two, it'll be too late. You're in no danger, Willard. The gun can't go off by itself. Or can it? For the love of heaven, look at Satan's left eye. In a few seconds... So you know about that left eye. You put it there, didn't you? Well, I... Uh, and you phoned I, your uncle at exactly 2.31 the next day to be sure he'd be sitting in that chair at the right time, didn't you? I don't know what you mean. You'd better know what I mean if you want to get out of that chair, and you'd better talk fast. Uh, yes, yes, I did it, but... How about Kirby? He noticed the eye. I had to do something quick before he had a chance to tell you. So you pushed him through the open window. Carter, Carter, let me out of this chair. It's after 2.30 now. Oh, don't worry. The gun isn't loaded. Isn't loaded? Now that we have the truth from you, nothing's going to happen. That's where you're wrong, my friend. Lucky. Things are going to happen right now. Don't move, Carter. This gun of mine doesn't have to wait for the sun. Lucky Bristol stands in the doorway, his revolver aimed at Nick. And it looks as though Jonathan Briggs' study may be the scene of still another killing. We'll see what happens in just a moment. Ladies, the next time you're faced with a sink full of greasy pots and pans, simply do this. Use new post-war Old Dutch cleanser made with activated seismatite. See if it doesn't clean in less time with less rubbing than any other cleanser you've ever used. Notice how amazingly fast it cuts grease. Thanks to activated seismatite, it cleans away both dirt and stains in hard or soft water. Thrill to the new, almost effortless ease in cleaning with new post-war Old Dutch. It cleans and polishes with a smooth, gliding action that means less work, less rubbing. It's utterly different, so try it, compare it. See for yourself how new post-war Old Dutch cleanser made with activated seismatite gives you new speed, new ease in all your cleaning. Now for the conclusion of the case of the devil's left eye. Today's adventure with Nick Carter... Brought to you by new post-war Old Dutch cleanser. <coughs> Harry Willard has confessed to the murder of his uncle, Jonathan Briggs. But before Nick can take him to the police, Lucky Bristol, the gambler, appears in the doorway, a revolver in his hand. Well, well, Lucky Bristol. How do you fit into this picture, Lucky? I'm just protecting a little investment of mine, Mr. Carter. Mr. Willard here owes me a hundred grand. A hundred? It's only 50,000. It's a hundred thousand now, Mr. Willard. Or do you want me to tell Mr. Carter he can put his hands down? No, 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 a hundred's all right. And cheap at half the price. When you didn't show up at my place at two o'clock, I came up here to see why. Well, you found out. Now what? Now nothing. I'm leaving. Well, what about them? They know about Uncle Jonathan. Well, if I were you, I'd make sure they didn't tell anybody. You mean I've got to... I don't know what you're going to do. I won't be here. But before I go, you better get Carter's gun to do it with. Yeah, yes, of course. Don't try anything, Carter. I'm still protecting my investment. Don't worry. I know when I'm licked. Okay, Lucky. I got Carter's gun. Okay. I'll send a couple of my boys around late tonight in case there's anything you want carried out of the building and uh, left someplace. So long. You going to let this man make a fool of you, Willard? What do you mean? You think we've got to be killed to protect your secret, don't you? Why, of course. How about Lucky? I don't kill you. How about Lucky? You're going to let him walk out of here knowing enough about you to send you to the chair? Smart guy, aren't you, Carter? Yes, he is smart, Lucky. I never thought of that. Why, you poor sap. Keep your hands away from your pocket, Lucky. You cheap little punk. If you think you can get away with anything like this, Doc Patsy. I told you I'd get you. Oh, nice work, Nick. Let them shoot it out with each other, then you shoot the winner's gun out of his hand. Where'd you get that gun, Carter? I thought Willard... It didn't occur to Willard that the gun he took wasn't the only one I had. I carry this one in a shoulder holster for just such emergencies. You're a lucky stiff, Carter. I may be lucky, but I'm no stiff. All right, Willard. You can get up off the floor now. I'm shot, Carter. Hurt bad. You live. It's only your shoulder. Here's your gun back, Nick. Willard is all through with it. Thanks, Patsy. 
Better call the police ambulance for Willard. And tell Matty to send along the hurry-up wagon for his pal. Right away, Nick. They may ride down to headquarters separately, but they'll end up in the same place when they answer for their crimes. <laughs> going to explain what's been going on. I don't understand it at all. I didn't want to try to explain until I could show you a little experiment. Huh? Patsy, when you were a little girl, didn't you ever set a piece of paper on fire by focusing the sun's rays on it with a magnifying glass? Sure, all kids do that. So what? So you can set off gunpowder the same way. And that's just what Willard did. Go on, I'm listening. Willard replaced Satan's left eye in the stained glass window with a special lens he'd had made. A lens that would focus the sun's rays right on the powder in the firing pan of the old flintlock. You fire the gun that way? Well, I'll be darned. With the charged spots on the top of the high boy that gave him away. You see, he had to experiment for several days at the same time in the afternoon to be sure that he had the lens set in the window at exactly the right angle. Golly, that must have been pretty complicated. Figuring the angle of the sun, the right kind of lens, the right time of day, and everything. It was, even for an amateur astronomer like Willard. But fortunately, his uncle was sick in bed for a week, and Willard was able to use the study undisturbed. So he was able to set the gun, go to Lake Placid 300 miles away, and then call his uncle on the phone at just the right time so he'd be sitting at his desk when the gun went off. Right. Now you know as much about it as I do. Oh, well, I knew Satan was dangerous, and I've heard of the evil eye. But I never expected to see a stained glass Satan with an eye evil enough to kill a man. Oh, that's really something. <laughs> And now, Nick, about the case that new post-war old Dutch cleanser is going to have for us next week. Uh, does it get off to a pretty exciting start? Well, it was exciting enough for Patsy and me. It began when we found a dead man lying on the floor in the middle of my office. And before it was over, we spent most of the night tramping around in an old deserted cemetery. That sounds exciting enough for anybody. Uh, what do you call it, Nick? I call it the case of the graveyard gunman. <laughs> Attention, homemakers. Now you don't need a mixing bowl to color margarine. The sensational new Delrich Easy Color Pack margarine ends mixing bowl mess. With Delrich, the margarine and color berry are both inside a sealed plastic bag. You simply pinch the berry, then gently knead the bag. And Delrich quickly blends to a luscious golden color inside the bag. And listen, the delicious country sweet flavor and freshness of Delrich are sealed in. It's truly America's finest margarine. Ask for the new Delrich Easy Color Pack margarine tomorrow. Nick Carter, Master Detective, presented each week at this time by the Cudahy Packing Company. It is produced and directed by Jock McGregor and is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications Incorporated. Charlotte Manson is featured as Patsy. Today's script was written by Jim Parsons. Original music is played by Henry Silverne. This program is fictional, and any resemblance to actual persons living or dead is purely coincidental. This is Bob Martin saying, when minutes count, use new post-war Old Dutch Cleanser. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.